What's, What's up, up everyone? everyone? It's Danny and Nick. Today we're going to be talking about the things to do and see in Florence, Italy. Hopefully you're coming from our Venice video and if you're like us, we traveled from Venice to Florence. We took the high speed train which took about two hours um, and then we ended up in Florence. So here is what we suggest to do there. My number one recommendation and my favorite thing in Florence and if not the whole entire trip to Italy was Bardini and Bubbly Gardens. Bubbly Gardens is very popular and uh, you probably know about it if you like to take pictures and have looked into going to Florence at all. But our host of the Airbnb told us to go check out Bardini Gardens as well. We got to go in this back entrance because most people don't know about Bardini Gardens and it was super quick. We were the only people in line there and we walked into this beautiful garden and had it all to ourselves and then once we were done there it connected into Bubbly Gardens so we did not have to wait in that line and we walked right in to those gardens and then they were beautiful as well and obviously more touristy so lots more people were there and then after that we ended up at the Pity Palace and um, we believe that that ticket was also included all three the two gardens are definitely included in the same ticket and we think that the Pity Palace was as well and then you end up there and you can finish there it is a beautiful place and in Bardini Gardens there's a little museum there and if you climb up to the third floor there's a balcony it's hidden and they do not really display it as something that you can go on but you definitely can go on it and we got the coolest pictures that we will put right here of the views in Florence You'll find views of Florence in a lot of places because you can go to the top of a lot of things. But this one was very unique because there was no one else there. There were pictures of no people. Um, it was just us on a balcony and I mean there's nothing else like that because Florence is pretty crowded and to find a place that most people didn't know about was really cool and we would highly recommend you check it out and hopefully not too many people will see this video so that not everyone shows up there together. If you're planning a trip to Florence, one of the most iconic views is the Duomo, which is basically in Center City, Florence. Um, it's literally the most iconic thing in the city. Um, it's a big line to get into it, so did we buy tickets for that in advance? I don't think you can. I don't think you can, so um, that's definitely something you should try to do early in the morning. It's beautiful. Um, it's attached to a bell tower as well, I want to say, um, which you can buy tickets to go up and see. Um, we didn't do that, um, however you can. I do want to say uh, you have to make reservations for, you, you can't just show up to the bell tower, so you yeah. have to make reservations for that, but it's a, you know open entry for the, um, the Duomo itself, so you basically just show up, wait in line, and then you, you kind of are shuffled through. The other thing we did the same day as the Duomo was the Academia with David. Uh, they were very close to each other and easily walkable, so we would recommend that you do those two things in the same day uh, if you want to do the Academia. It wasn't anything too crazy, but obviously a lot of people want to see David because it's so iconic. So that was a long line as well, worth waiting in is if you're interested in seeing it, um, but if you don't care too much about seeing a naked statue, then maybe you skip that. Yeah, Michelangelo's David is way bigger than you would typically think. It's a giant, giant marble statue. Um, there's other, if you like art, it's definitely, or sculpture, it's definitely worth going to see. There's but other, very crowded. Very crowded. There's definitely, um, you know, lots of tours that go through there um, with, you know, tons and tons of people. So uh, definitely go early to that if you can. But there's other cool statues in the Academy as well. Um, we were in there maybe an hour. Um, you know, we didn't spend a ton of time. But not including the line we waited in. <laughs> it, it was, yeah, the, the line's not good. Uh, but besides that, it's, it's worth seeing. While we're on the topic of art galleries, uh, you should go to the Uffizi Art Gallery if you have time. That's probably one of the most famous, if not the most famous, art gallery in Florence. Um, they have a ton of Da Vinci paintings and a bunch of other famous painters. Um, that is definitely worth going in. They have a bunch of cool stat marble statues um, as well. Uh, it's, it's much bigger than the Academia from if I'm remembering correctly. Um, it's very, very crowded as well, so the line's not good, but once you get in, um, I mean, it can still be crowded, but I feel like you do have enough space. I think it's multiple floors, uh, and it is really, really definitely worth going to see and walking through. My other favorite thing in Florence was the Piazza Michelangelo. You walk up um, maybe a quarter mile. Yeah. And you walk up this uh, hill and you get to the top and it's a beautiful overlook of the city. It's very crowded because it is a known thing Especially to go and sunset. do. <laughs> yes, at sunset, but that's when we went. 
it wasn't overly crowded. It was definitely worth it. You got to watch the sunset over Florence. You will never get to do that. So uh, definitely worth doing. And then what we found, a secret little gem, is we walked to the other side um, from where you walk up. And there was a garden over there. And that was really fun to walk through a little secret garden um, that you don't have to pay to get into during sunset. And you're, you get to see a couple sneak peeks of Florence through the trees and stuff there. Um, so that was really cool as well. And there's also, I want to say, a bronze statue of David on the top of the Piazza dei Michelangelo. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another way you can see a similar looking David. One of the other less known museums, I would say, that's typically not been crowded every time I've been to it, is the um, Galileo Museum. Um, I believe it's three stories. It's a pretty big museum, um, and it's basically got all of uh, Galileo's scientific inventions. Um, I think there might even be some Da Vinci stuff in there as well. Uh, and it's it, if you like science and you like and if you don't like science like I thought it was really yeah, interesting and, some cool stuff in yeah there. it was pretty hands-on museum where you could interact with things and that was really cool yeah, it's it's not that expensive I mean you can spend all day in it if you really wanted if you're you know want to go and nerd out but if you just want to walk through it it's still really cool to see I definitely recommend it and it's a less crowded museum which will be really nice when you're used to going through all these crowded museums it's a good break and air conditioned if you're there in the summer it's a nice way to cool off as well yep and it's not too far from the Ponte Vecchio so um, if you're around that area it's pretty close to that and that's another attraction you have to see in Florence is the Ponte Vecchio. Uh, walk across the bridge, see all the shops, and then also if you go parallel to it, then you can have a nice view of the bridge and have some pictures with that in the background. A lot of these things that we mentioned um, are included in the Florence Pass. So if you are going to be uh, going to multiple attractions, we ended up purchasing the Florence Pass and I believe it co goes in different segments. We did like a three day pass. Um, so in those three days you have the entrance to a bunch of different places for a lot cheaper. I don't think it was free. You have to pay like for some of the stuff you have to for pay. some stuff and some stuff was free. So just depends and you can read up on that online. Um, I think it skips the line in a few things and like she said you buy them in like you know hour increments. So like or not hour, but it's like a 72 hour pass or a full week pass yep. um, is how you, how you purchase it. Yeah, so if you are interested in buying a Florence Pass, then you should buy it before you attend multiple things. So either on your first day there or if you want to do some day trips and then go attend museums for the next three days, just make sure you're buying it logically and using it to its advantage. And one thing, you do have to buy them in specific locations. I'm pretty sure we purchased ours at the, the Uffizi. Uffizi, yeah, Uffizi Art Gallery. Um, you but can you buy it at just, the train station. Yeah, at the train station, you, but you can't buy it just anywhere. So try to think about that when you're coming into Florence, whether you get it at the train station or, you know, start out and get it the day before at the Uffizi or that day or that early that morning. Also, when you're going to the Piazza City Michelangelo, the bridge you walk over, or the most direct bridge to walk over to get to that, you can look um, to your right and you'll see a really good view of the Ponte Vecchio. So um, we got some cool pictures there. A day trip from Florence that we did not experience, but our research and our friends who have gone to Florence have all highly recommended to take was to go to Siena. Uh, there are so many things to do there. You could even make it more than a day trip if you wanted to. Uh, we did not have time to make it there and we are really disappointed of that, but it is definitely a place to check out and there are so many pictures on the internet to show you uh, all the beautiful things that you can see in Siena. One of the best day trips you can do from Florence is Cinque Terre. Um, it's a two to three hour bus ride, I want to say. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a company that basically picks you up in the morning early on a bus at the train station. Takes in Florence. You, in Florence. Takes you to Cinque Terre um, and guides you through the five different towns. That's what Cinque Terre means, five towns. Um, and then they bring you back on the bus. It's a full day, so be ready for some hiking. Be ready, you know, to like, wear your comfortable shoes. Yeah, you're gonna be walking a lot, but um, you can take the trains um, in between cities, so you don't have to do all the walking if you don't want. But the guided hike in through the towns, it is. It was probably my favorite thing we did. It's part um, of the experience Italy. too to walk from one town to the other, so you can really see all these beautiful views and different. You can see the town down below. Um, just very incredible. Yeah, Cinque Terre is right on the coast for any of you that don't know. Um, so you're getting these really, really beautiful um, views of the water. You got some of the you know crystal, crystal blue water shots. Um, these cool, like uh, really colorful buildings, um, all stacked up, um, kind of in the mountains on these like really, really steep cliffs. Um, it is really, really beautiful. Very unique place. You won't, you probably won't see anything like it. 
And as Nicholas said, we did take an organized trip there. We would highly recommend that. It made it so easy because we didn't really have to worry about not making it back in time on a train or anything. Getting we, lost. Yeah, we, we had a tour work. guide the whole time, and our tour guide was very friendly. Mateo. And Mateo. He was so cool, um, and he was just hanging out with us all day. He took us to the secret lunch spot. Now, you could go and have lunch wherever you wanted if you wanted to have your unique experience, but to us, this was even more unique. He took us to this home-cooked lunch spot where we so were good. the only ones there and the owners came out and met us and it really gave us that personal italy experience and their home cooked food which was yeah delicious. we'll link that company below in case you want to use them um, we loved it the best thing is if you want to be with the guide the entire time you can be with the guide the entire time although they do give you a pretty long leash if you want to go exploring on your own really the only thing that you have to be um, is on, well you don't have to but you need to be there at the ending time of the day to go take the bus back and then obviously you know on the trip to Chiquitur you got to be there at a certain time in the morning but besides that um, they give you a pretty long leash to do what you want and we love Cinque Terre so much. We thought there was so much more to see and do. We basically did a little bit of everything in one day. And if you have the opportunity to spend a couple days there, it would definitely be worth it. Um, Two to three days would be awesome. Yes. So then you could experience each town even more in depth. So those are our recommendations and tips for uh, planning a trip to Florence. If you have any questions about traveling to Florence, getting from Venice to Florence, or anything about Italy in general, or Cinque Terre, leave them in, in the, the comments, comments below. below. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.